So today I'm here at CarMax because they just released their earnings and what they said was alarming for not just the car market, but for the overall economy. JP Morgan has added to its focus list as a short. Mm. They're underweight, the target 65. Recent results continue to show a lack of market share recovery. So here's the biggest alarming thing that, uh, that CarMax said during this quarter and that is that their loan loss provisions have had to go way up. The amount of money that they've lost on bad loans has had to go way way up and they're estimating that it's going to continue to get worse and this is what we're seeing in the car market right now and this is what CarMax is telling us is that uh, okay people people are not they're not paying for their car bills auto loan delinquencies are on the rise repos are on the rise and this is exactly what CarMax is talking about in fact whenever they released their earnings report when they said that they had to increase their loan loss provisions their stock sold off now, after the stock markets uh, analyzed exactly what the numbers look like and saw that CarMax's sales were up and the quarter actually looked good, well, the stock rebounded and it went up and it finished positive for the day. But the big thing that, uh, that is really in this earnings report is that people just aren't paying their car bills. And it's gonna be a big problem going forward for the car market, it's a big headwind and their quarter would have been so much better if they not, had not had to put back all this money for their loan loss provisions. They took, uh, they took it up like 20, 25%, something around there. That's a big number for them to raise to be able to say, okay, things are getting worse for the consumer and we can see it down here because we know that there are gonna be future losses on a lot of these cars that we're lending money on today. All right, so check this out. Whenever I'm here, I always wanna look at 4Runners, uh, some of the most highly desirable used vehicles on the market. 2018 Toyota 4Runner Limited. It's got 51,000 miles, even with 51,000 miles still $37,000. Absolutely insane. All right, and all of these right here could be a big problem for CarMax. See, the big three will think uh, Ram, GM, Ford, they're all having big time issues with selling these big trucks. So what does that mean? That means that these dealers, at these new franchise dealers, the prices are getting lower. These manufacturers are adding incentives and that pushes the price down to where these newer used trucks sitting on CarMax's lot, they have to go down in price almost on a daily basis as these manufacturers continue to just screw things up. You think Stellantis is the easiest one where Ram, they have to cut production right now because they can't sell their trucks. And you can go to these Ram dealers, I just went at one the other day, where they're selling their trucks for invoice and then you're getting rebates from the manufacturer on top of the, the discounted from the dealers. So as all of these truck prices go down at these franchise dealers on the new level, then these newer used trucks have to go down in price too. So that's hitting CarMax. So the average selling price of what CarMax can actually charge for these cars down here has gone down about $1,250. And we're seeing this across the board in the whole industry, not just in used cars, not just uh, big used car dealers, small used car dealers. We're also seeing it on the new side too, where manufacturers are having to add incentives. And on top of that, these new car dealers are having to discount their prices. They're having to take, uh, take a lot of these add-ons off of these cars that they could get uh, six months ago, 12 months ago. They no longer can get those because the whole market is going down. We're seeing that in the numbers for CarMax. CarMax is publicly traded, so it makes it easy for us to dissect these numbers and see that, uh, that the car market is coming down. Uh, the prices of these vehicles are coming down. And really how CarMax goes, so should the rest of the industry because CarMax is the largest used auto dealer in the US. So they're going to have a pulse on the market. They're gonna know what they need to do to actually move metal. They're gonna have data behind all this, knowing what they need to price their vehicles. And right now they're saying, okay, we have to price our vehicles cheaper to actually get them sold. That's what we're seeing the numbers right now. Prices are coming down and CarMax is saying that right here. This is what I wanna see right here. I go look at Wagoneers all the time at these Jeep dealerships. This one's a 2022 and you can still see 2023 new Jeep Wagoneers. This one's got 28,000 miles and look at the price. It's $56,000. Here's the thing I want to talk about with this. So a 2023 Jeep Wagoneer that I'm still seeing on lots right now, they're 80, 85, $90,000. Just a year and 20,000 miles later, it's dropped down to $56,000. And CarMax is not the cheapest of the cheap when it comes to used cars. You're paying a premium for the ease that you get here at CarMax. 
So that one here at CarMax has already dropped to $56,000 in a year, two years. Mm, that's not good. That's not good, especially if you're a Wagoneer or a Grand Wagoneer owner. And I just want to come back over here to this Wagoneer to check it out. I think I see it correctly, but uh, that consumer with Challenge Credit, they're paying 14, over $1,400 a month uh, for that, uh, that Wagoneer payment. That's a, that's a lot of money a month to, uh, to have that status symbol sitting in your uh, driveway. So one thing that CarMax has said in recent quarters is that, okay, they were going to keep their prices high and uh, they thought that that was the best model to make the money that they need to make to hit their numbers to appease the shareholders. And I really disagreed with this and thought that they were gonna have to lower their prices because the metal just wouldn't move. And it, right here, we're seeing this in this quarter that they've actually changed their course. They did not keep their prices as high as they were. You see that with them lowering their prices to actually move these cars. And a result of that is that their overall sales numbers were up 5%, but the amount of money that they brought in, the amount of sales money that they brought in was down 1%. And this is, how this really happens in the market that, okay, yeah, they sold more cars, but the amount of money from those sales was decreased. And you're going to start seeing this across the market, whether you're talking about new car dealers, used car dealers, mega used car dealers, where if they want to move more cars, they're going to have to lower their prices. And that's going to mean that overall, they're going to be bringing in less money for the amount of cars that they're, they're actually selling. All right, so let's check this out. This is a Honda Accord. It's, it's a 2019 and it's $24,000, but that's not what I wanna look at. What I wanna look at is the interest that a consumer is paying here in the monthly payment on a $24,000 car. So if someone has challenge credit, which most of CarMax's consumers are going to be of the subprime variety. So they are going to be the ones with challenge credit. So this is what a large, portion of CarMax's consumer base, this is what they're going to be paying. But with their challenge credit, they're going to be paying 23% interest. And this breaks down to a $617 a month payment. And keep in mind right now that a new car payment, the average new car payment is $750. And that car, that's $24,000, someone's going to be paying a little over $600 a month for it. But the reason why they would go to this car versus going to a brand new car, because people, they, they don't care what the price of the car is, they shop payments. So why would someone get that five-year-old car and pay almost the same amount per month than they would a brand new car? Well, the reason is, is because they can't get approved to buy that new car. The benefit that CarMax has with writing its own notes is that they can lend to whoever they want to lend to, whereas your financial institutions that are lending money, um, then they're going to be a lot tighter on these franchise dealers to who they can actually write loans to. So that consumer that's coming and signing up for that over $600 a month payment for that five-year-old car versus that new car, it's because they go to a lot of these franchise dealers and most likely they can't get approved. But here at CarMax, they can get approved. And I've talked to a salesperson here at CarMax before, and he said this was a, a big, uh, big benefit because uh, he has customers all the time that come in here and they say, well, we can't get it a loan anywhere else, um, but we can come here to CarMax and get a loan. Here's the problem. It might be good for getting butts and seats today, but here's the problem, and this is what CarMax has been talking about in their earnings, is that, okay, we have to increase our loan loss provisions because our delinquencies are going up, our repos are going up, the amount of money that we're losing on a lot of these loans is going up. And that's the long-term effect of getting butts and seats today by writing loans to these subprime customers that maybe should not be, uh, be approved because they're not getting approved in other places, except here at CarMax they are. This is your long-term problem that CarMax is going to have to solve uh, for a lot of these consumers and for a lot of these loans that they're writing. And maybe, maybe they tighten up because they're seeing the increase of what they have to put back uh, for these loan loss provisions. Um, but uh, right now they're selling more cars because they're getting more butts and seats because they're writing loans to a lot of these consumers that can't get loans other places. All right, and these are what I really wanted to find because uh, we haven't been able, the last few times I've been here at CarMax, I haven't seen very many RAV4s. So let's see if we've got some prices over here. This one actually might already be sold. There's no sticker on it, so I bet that one's already sold. Let's check this one right here. Nope, 
That one sold too. Okay. Well, maybe I'm uh, still correct about, oh, here's one that's got a price on it. Um, it is a 2021 Toyota RAV4 LE. It's got 58,000 miles. Price on it's 24 grand. And here's another one right here that's uh, it's got a uh, sticker on it also. This one's a newer one though, 2024, actually almost brand new. Uh, RAV4 Hybrid EL. It's only got 14,000 miles on it. It's 35 grand. Oh, let's let's look at the payments since we've been doing that. Um, so for the challenge credit, which is going to be most consumers here, $900 a month. And if you go up and you just have fair credit, $778 a month for this almost new uh, RAV4. And really, I think a lot of these car manufacturers can take some notes from this quarter, showing that okay, well their volume, CarMax's volume, is up, and. I think a big reason for that is because they have lowered prices. They have adjusted with the market. They even said a few quarters ago that they weren't going to do that. They weren't going to go that direction, but the management team, I feel like, is doing the right thing. I think they're, they're being smart about where the market is and where the market's going. And I mean, think about it, the CarMax, they have to be two and three steps ahead of the market. So they're going to tell you in these quarters where they think the market is going, and if they're lowering prices, then that means they think the, the price of vehicles is going to go down because CarMax, they have to buy cars from consumers well before they're actually going to put them on their lot. They have to go through their recon process. So they have to be months out on these cars that they're buying right now from consumers because if they buy these cars wrong, that can be a lot of loss for CarMax if they're buying tons and tons of cars on a daily basis, if they're buying them wrong and then uh, they have to put them out a month later after they go through their recon process and then the prices drop even more. This is what I'm talking about, about CarMax being way ahead of the market. They have to do that because they have to buy right. And in the car market, there's a, there's a big time saying, if you're watching this, you probably heard it before, but you don't make money when you sell your car. When you make money is when you buy the car. And check this out right here. This is the longest line of Jeeps I've actually seen at this car. Actually, it keeps going down there too. Um, I, I come to this car max a lot. They're a distributor store. So that means they have lots and lots of uh, varieties of vehicles here. And also they, uh, they have lots of vehicles all the time. So it's easy to come here and show a bunch of different prices, a bunch of different kind of cars. And these are the kind of things that I like to look at is to see how many maybe undesirable V. I don't know if that's the word you want to use, but uh, Jeep, uh, Cherokees, Grand Cherokees, uh, Wagoneers, um, these Wranglers, they're having the Rams right now. So I'm just having a hard time selling all these things. So this is, this is hitting, this is hitting CarMax because as it gets harder for, for Stellantis dealers to sell those things, well, the prices have to come down. And then these consumers that are bringing these vehicles in, well, they're going to get less money uh, for them because the wholesale prices also have to come down. So I almost wonder if, okay, if CarMax basically steals these uh, these these undesirable vehicles from consumers uh, to uh, to to really be able to buy them because they probably CarMax if the, these Jeep Dodge Ram dealers don't really want them, then uh, you know CarMax doesn't really want them. So that means they have to buy them so cheap because there's so many of them coming into the market right now because people are trying to get rid of their uh, negative equity. They're trying to trade out of them. They want to figure out what to do about all this money that they've lost in the last couple of years um, because the prices have been crushed so much on the Stellantis side that uh, it almost just makes you think. If CarMax is going to buy them, then they almost have to steal them to, to have them on their lot because they don't really want them either. Now, CarMax's profit per car is a little over uh, $2,200 per car. And this hasn't changed a whole lot uh, in, the, in the past six, 12 months or whatever. Um, but what's that showing is that the cars that, they're, that are coming into the system, they're paying less for that. And that's less for them. And that's, uh, that's really showing that they're keeping up with the market and knowing what the wholesale values of these cars for are. Because uh, they really make money on these cars by selling them in, in two ways. Well, one, they can sell them to retail customers that are, I mean, that's what these cars are down here. And two, they can sell them to used car dealers like me. So CarMax owns their own auctions. And when they're buying these cars, they have to know exactly what the wholesale values are because when they buy them from consumers, they send them to auction and dealers know how much they should be able to pay cars for. Well, I'll say most of us know there are some, uh, still some crazy dealers out there that are paying full retail for some of these cars. And guess what? Those cars are sitting on lots. Uh, but in most cases, 
whatever the car brings at auction is going to be close to what the wholesale amount should be in a lot of cases. And uh, so that means CarMax even more needs to know the wholesale values in this environment because that's who they're selling them to. They're selling them to wholesale buyers just like myself. And we, we should know, at least it's our job to know how much we should be able to buy a car to then be able to retail it to actually make some money. And uh, here's, the, here's the big one right here. Their finance income was down 14% due to an uptick in loan losses. We talked about that a little bit earlier, but I wanna, I wanna come back around on this because really what a lot of people don't understand is CarMax handles the whole process. They have every, they have their, their foot, their toe in every little piece of the car market. They have it on the wholesale side where, okay, they're buying cars from individuals and then they're selling them to uh, wholesale customers like myself. Um, at their auctions, um, they sell cars retail, and they also are able to sell loans. They're, they write their own notes for a lot of these cars. And then after these cars get on the road and the consumers are driving them, well, they're also responsible for that, uh, that delinquency, that, uh, that repo that has to happen if a consumer can't pay their, uh, their car note. So at that point, CarMax themselves will go and repo these cars and then they'll bring them either to the auction or they try to get some money out of them or they can re-retail them if they're in good enough shape. But in a lot of cases, they're not. So in those cases when cars are bought and they're driven for six months and then they go delinquent and then they have to be repoed, those cars are usually not in great shape because consumers really only have money to do one thing. They can either pay for the car or they can fix it but they really don't have money to do both. And if they know that they're going to stop paying for that car, they're not gonna fix it, they're not gonna maintain it, they're not gonna keep it clean. So in a lot of those cases, when that car does get repoed and gets sent to the auction, it's gonna bring a lot less money than in a lot of cases what the customer actually owes on the car. So CarMax in those situations will actually lose a lot of money. And this is one of the problems that some shareholders found with, uh, with the earnings report the sales, the, the good sales really overshadowed a lot of this negativity that uh, CarMax talked about with, uh, with the weaker consumer. Um, but this is going to be something we need to pay attention to going forward because at some point there might be a place where, okay, there's so many um, auto loan delinquencies, so many repos that it really hurts CarMax's numbers in a big way. And uh, as delinquencies continue to rise, as repos continue to rise, this is a big headwind for CarMax because I mean, all those cars down there, people aren't paying cash for these cars. They're writing loans on almost every one of those cars down there. And that's a lot of money that people don't have right now and they have to spend on other things like groceries, insurance, uh, rent, and, uh, and auto loan delinquencies. They're gonna to continue to go up.